Was there a real life Dr. Frankenstein? Yes, there was. And his name was Giovanni Aldini. And he actually made corpses move with electricity. However, the gruesome nature of his experiments obscured the fact that he was an excellent scientist who actually revolutionized the studies of biology and medicine, all in the name of familial love. Ready for both a ghoulish and an inspirational story? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. On January 18th, 1803, a man named George Forster was put to death for drowning his estranged wife and one of their children. At the time, dissection and other manipulations of a corpse was considered sacrilege. So as further punishment, after Foster had been hung for his crimes, his lifeless body was taken to a public operating theater where an Italian physicist named Giovanni Aldini experimented with it. Aldini was a galvanist or person who believed that animal electricity is what makes animals alive and that certain procedures could release this electricity even when the animal or the person was dead. Aldini proceeded to use a battery to get the dead man's jaw to shake and even opened his left eye. The highlight, so to speak, was when Aldini struck one electrified probe in the corpse's ear and another one in his rectum which made Forster's leg kick and his right hand to clench and pump in the air. The warden of Newgate Prison said it looked like Forster was about to come back to life. He said the demonstrations were so disturbing and upsetting that they caused a church usher to die of fright. You can take that with a grain of salt. Now, why was Aldini electrifying corpses in the first place? It had to do with his family. See, Aldini's uncle, was a doctor and anatomy professor named Luigi Galvani, who was assisted in his work by his wife, Lucia. When Aldini was in college, his aunt and uncle accidentally discovered that if a decapitated skin frog was touched with an electrified probe, it would jump like it was alive. Aldini was fascinated. And as soon as he graduated from college, he joined them and electrocuted every animal in sight. They discovered that all animals would respond physically to electricity although frog legs seem to have the most dramatic effect. They weren't the first to notice that electricity makes animals jump, but they were the first to theorize that electricity is how muscles and nerves normally function. While playing with dead frogs, they also found that putting both copper and iron into a frog's body produces electricity with no static electricity machines or thunderstorms in sight. Crazy, huh? In the middle of all this exciting research, Lucia Galvani fell very ill, and despite Luigi's devoted care, she died from complications from her asthma in 1788. As a result, Luigi Galvani did not publish his work until 1791. In this paper, Galvani postulated that all animals had what he called animal electricity inside them, which is what makes them and us alive. Galvani had made the spark of life literal. Imagine their dismay when the very next year, Alessandro Volta, Europe's premier electrical science, published a paper that claimed that animal electricity was bunk. See, Volta had found that two different metals will work to electrify a live frog, and he decided that the electricity came from the dissimilar metals, not the frog itself. Galvani didn't want to respond. He was a quiet, soft-spoken, religious man who did not like conflict, and he was also still mourning his wife's passing. Aldini, however, was raring for a fight, especially after Galvani had just nursed him through an illness. This is how Aldini described it in 1794. My uncle Galvani was treating me for a deadly fever. After having escaped, thanks to his generous care and efforts, a nearly unavoidable death, I started to work zealously to bring support to a doctrine that I trusted, despite the attacks under which it came. I felt at ease to be able to pay a tribute to the truth and at the same time to provide Galvani with a public account of my gratitude. From this time on, Aldini was the face of Galvanism. It became a big debate between the Voltists, led by Volta, and the Galvanists, led by Aldini. But was the frog jumping because it possessed an electrical life force? Or was the frog jumping because two different metals created electricity? By the way, both sides' ideas were partially correct and partially incorrect. 
The galvanists were correct that all living things use and produce electricity to make their muscles move and their nerves transmit signals. So if you artificially add electricity, even a dead animal will react. However, they were wrong in thinking that a dead animal will produce its own electricity. Volta was correct that the two different metals were creating electricity in this experiment. However, Volta missed that he was actually studying a chemical reaction. It needed a chemical, an acid or a base, with the two metals to create the electricity. In 1800, Volta struck a blow against galvanism. He created a device out of metals that would produce a shock without the different metals touching anything alive or formally alive. Volta had taken discs of silver and zinc and piled them up with cardboard soaked in salt water between them. If you touch both ends with your wet hands, you could get a shock out of this pile in a continuous current. In fact, Volta had invented the battery. Volta wrote that his research was motivated because he, quote, found myself obliged to combat the pretended animal electricity of Galvani. Although Volta's battery seemed to invalidate the galvanist theory, an ironic twist, the battery ended up being invaluable for studying electricity in organic systems. Aldini began to use Volta's battery with astonishing results. He electrocuted the brain of a decapitated ox and made the ox's facial muscles move. In 1802, Aldini turned to the decapitated heads of criminals and just like the ox, managed to manipulate their facial expressions by electrifying parts of their brains. This was the first real glimpse of how the brain works. In this way, Aldini was the first to realize that one hemisphere of the brain controls the opposite side of the body. Aldini also created electric shock therapy for depression. First, he conducted a, quote, long series of painful, disagreeable experiments on his own head with a voltaic battery to try to get a gauge of how powerful and useful electric shocks could be. He then gave shocks to a 27-year-old farmer named Luis Lanzarini, who was suffering from debilitating depression and was being housed in an insane asylum. According to Aldini, Lanzarini immediately began feeling better and started smiling. And after several days of shocks, Lanzarini was considered cured and was released from the asylum. Although electric shock therapy was abused and misused, especially in the 1950s and 60s, it is still considered one of the most effective treatments for severe depression today. Sometimes doctors even electrically stimulate the brain directly in something called deep brain stimulation in a manner that Aldini would have found fascinating. In addition, Aldini correctly predicted that electricity could force a damaged heart to beat, although he was never successful with his primitive batteries. In this way, Aldini is the father of the defibrillator and the pacemaker. Finally, Aldini's gruesome experiments grabbed the public's attention, so much so that galvanism became synonymous with using electricity to reanimate a corpse. This is why, 13 years after Aldini electrified Forster's dead corpse, an 18-year-old woman named Mary had heard of galvanism. Then when Mary and her friends were trying to entertain each other by writing scary stories during a cold vacation, they had a discussion about galvanism and reanimating corpses. Mary Shelley said that it was this discussion that inspired her to write a horror story called Frankenstein. However, unlike the Dr. Frankenstein in Mary Shelley's famous book, Dr. Aldini was never trying to reanimate anyone. He merely wanted to, quote, obtain a practical knowledge of how far galvanism might be employed to revive a person. If you think of the pacemaker and the defibrillator, it turned out Aldini's ghoulish demonstrations did save many people's lives, as well as inspiring the first and one of the best science fiction novels of all time. Thanks for watching my video. Please give it a nice thumbs up. If you want to know more about Galvani, I have a video about that. If you want to know more about Volta, I have a video about that. If you want to know how the battery works, I have a video about that too. But why don't you just join my channel and then you can watch all my great videos. Have a good day.